In the previous video, I've asked you a question, and the answer to that was methemoglobinemia. So let's talk about that today. This is the topic of today's video with Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. And let's get started. Some Medicosis words of wisdom. In life, everything has its pros and cons. Methemoglobin is no exception. So what are the cons? It's a freaking disease. And what are the pros? It can treat cyanide poisoning. As you know, hemoglobin is heme and globin. Heme, by the way, means iron. It doesn't necessarily mean blood, like we refer to blood as heme, but in fact, it means iron. Heme is iron and protoporphyrin. What kind of iron? The ferrous, the 2 plus. Fe2 binds O2. Only the ferrous can bind oxygen. Fe3 or the ferric cannot bind oxygen. And this is the problem in methemoglobinemia. Normal hemoglobin structure subunits we have protein and non protein. The non protein is heme, the protein is globin. How about the heme, iron and protoporphyrin? What type of iron? The ferrous. So the normal hemoglobin has two alpha chains and two beta chains, and each chain has this slide, and this is called heme. It has protoporphyrin and iron. Normal hemoglobin is like a car. It has four seats. It's a normal sedan. The four seats are for four oxygen molecules. I love etymology and terminology. Met hemoglobin. First, let's start with IN. IN means protein. Okay, globe is globular, so globular protein, it's known as globin. We called globin globin because it's a ball, it's a globular protein, and it's big, it's bigger than albumin. Hemo, hemoglobin is the hemoglobin. Met hemoglobin, met means change. If you remember your crazy organic chemistry classes, we had this six carbon, and we have locations. If the atom is here, we call it in the ortho position, which means straight. Here the para, which means parallel to the ortho. And here is meta, because meta means change, such as metamorphosis and metaphysics. Change, different. That's why methemoglobin is a changed hemoglobin. Instead of ferrous, now we have ferric. We are still stuck in the past. In chemistry, oxidation can mean one of three things. Gain of oxygen, of course, oxidation. Loss of hydrogen is also oxidation. And loss of electrons, which are negatively charged. So gaining of positive charge are, is roughly a process of oxidation. So when the iron goes from the ferrous to the ferric, this is oxidation. You gained a positive charge and you lost an electron. The opposite is reduction. That's why. To convert the methemoglobin into normal hemoglobin, you need an enzyme, a reductase, because this is a reduction, honey. Methemoglobin reductase. As you know, iron in the hemoglobin is in the ferrous state. Naturally, it's auto-oxidized from ferrous into ferric. It's normal. However, this Fe3 or the ferric cannot carry oxygen. And the mnemonic, ferric is hysteric. It cannot carry oxygen. But we have mechanisms to defend our body against this ferric. This is normal. The RBCs have a methemoglobin reductase pathway. Reductase, it reduces ferric into ferrous. From methemoglobin into normal hemoglobin. This amazing methemoglobin reductase pathway consists of cytochrome B5. Cytochrome B5 reductase to reduce the ferric into ferrous and NADH. This is normal. That's why normally red blood cells have less than 0.5% methemoglobin. 0.5% of what? Of the total hemoglobin. And we have HMP shunt, hexose monophosphate shunt, also known as pentose shunt. This pentose shunt produces an ADPH. Also, an ADPH helps reduces the ferric into ferrous. That's why normally red blood cells have less than half percent methemoglobin. So we have here the equation, if you are interested, we here have the NADH, and here we have the ferric, 3+, and here we have the ferrous. What's the name of the enzyme again? 
NADH-dependent cytochrome B5 methemoglobin reductase. Brief, brief review of the hexose monophosphate chunt. You start with glucose and by a hexokinase or a glucokinase, you end up with glucose 6-phosphate. Why? Because glucose can go into the cell and jump back out of the cell. This is nonsense. We have to fix glucose in the cell so that we can work on it. What fixes stuff is phosphate. Phosphate fix stuff. So glucose 6-phosphate is fixed inside the cell. Now we have the amazing G6PD glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase and it produces NADPH. NADPH helps the cytochrome B5 reductase to reduce the methemoglobin into regular hemoglobin. And if you remember my video on glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency, you have an oxidative agent such as the falafel sandwich. By the way, it has to be Egyptian falafel because falafel in other countries are made of hummus, but in Egypt they are made of beans. And beans, the fava beans, causes favism. So it has to be Egyptian falafel, which are amazing, by the way. This oxidative agent will produce the free radicals. Also, it will convert the ferrous into ferric, which is hysteric. This is nonsense. This is bad. That's why we need the amazing NADH-dependent cytochrome B5 reductase to reduce the ferric into the normal ferrous hemoglobin, which is excellent. Also, the NADPH, thanks to G6PD, can convert the ferric into ferrous and the RBCs is happy. The oxygen is binding to the hemoglobin because Fe2 binds O2 and everything is hunky-dory. What happens during intravascular hemolysis? The red blood cells is consumed by the crazy macrophage. Red blood cells have hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is heme and globin. But hemoglobin alone is toxic to the cells. That's why your body will try to get rid of it. Haptoglobin binds hemoglobin, that's number one. Haptoglobin is saturated, no more. Then hemoglobin is oxidized into methemoglobin, which is horrible. Methemoglobin will bind to albumin, normally, leading to methemalbumin. And we can test that by the Shums test. Okay, saturated, let's go to the next one. Methemoglobin is degraded into heme plus hemopexin. If everything is saturated, hemoglobin will start to appear in urine. We call this hemoglobin urea. Urea means urine. Then hemoglobin will be converted into hemosiderin. Siderin is iron. Siderosis is iron overload. And you will end up with black urine in cases of plasmodium falciparum malaria. Why black urine? Lots of hemoglobin in the urine. So what's the big deal with methemoglobin? Why should we even care? Because methemoglobin, kiddo, is a ferric. It cannot bind oxygen. The ferric is hysteric. Only Fe2 can bind O2. So ferric cannot carry oxygen, which is called hypoxia. When there's hypoxia, EPO is, EPO is stimulated. This is an appropriate increase in EPO, leading to erythrocytosis, primary or secondary, secondary. The primary erythrocytosis is polycythemia vera, if you remember. Cannot carry oxygen, what will happen to the oxygen saturation, which we have talked about in the previous video? It's gonna decrease, absolutely. Quick review of polycythemia, it could be relative when you lose plasma, or it could be absolute, such as primary, which is polycythemia vera, or secondary, which means increase of EPO. Could be an appropriate compensatory increase in EPO as a response to hypoxia, including them at hemoglobinemia, or it can be inappropriate due to tumor. Hypoxia has three main causes, ischemia, hypoxemia and hemoglobin abnormalities, also known as deshemoglobin, such as CO poisoning and methemoglobinemia, both of which decreases your oxygen saturation. What's the oxygen saturation? It's the oxygen that's on the hemoglobin. Clinical picture of hypoxia. Cyanosis. What is cyanosis? Bluish discoloration of skin mucous membrane. Occurs when? When you have the reduced hemoglobin high exceeding 5 grams per deciliter in the capillary bed. You end up with confusion, cognitive impairment, lethargy, and fatigue. All of these symptoms are common in methemoglobinemia. Duh! What's the difference between normal hemoglobin and this hemoglobin? Normal hemoglobin is mostly oxyhemoglobin and part of it is deoxy, which includes like carbaminohemoglobin, which is carbon dioxide. On the other hand, this hemoglobin, you have oxyhemoglobin, have you deoxyhemoglobin, and you have the crazy methemoglobin. This is methemoglobinemia. 
So what is the oxygen saturation? It's the oxygen that's on the hemoglobin. So the oxyhemoglobin over total hemoglobin. So normally your oxygen saturation is oxyhemoglobin over the total, which is oxy plus deoxy, and normally it's around 97%, which is amazing. But in case of methemoglobinemia, to measure the oxygen saturation, put the oxyhemoglobin on top and the total on the bottom. Here it's 50%, which is horrible. The difference between pulse oximetry and pulse co-oximetry or CO oximetry, both of them measure the oxygen saturation. No, duh. Both of them use a probe clipped over your finger. Pulse oximeter can quantify the oxyhemoglobin and the deoxyhemoglobin. Pulse co-oximetry, same thing, oxyhemoglobin and deoxyhemoglobin. However, the pulse oximetry cannot identify this hemoglobin such as methemoglobin. On the other hand, pulse CO oximetry can identify the dishemoglobin, such as methemoglobinemia. So, if we have a patient that we suspect is having methemoglobinemia, which one should we use? The answer is pulse co-oximetry. Define methemoglobinemia, pathological condition in which methemoglobin level exceeds 1%. So, what's the normal? Less than half of the total hemoglobin concentration. When you have ferric, it cannot bind oxygen, you end up with hypoxia and functional anemia. Why functional? It's not dilutional. Dilutional anemia when you have lots of plasma, but this is not dilutional, it's functional anemia. Methemoglobin increases the oxygen binding affinity of hemoglobin, which means left shifting of the oxygen dissociation curve, which leads to decreased oxygen unloading to tissue. When that curve is shift to the left, the tissue is left behind. Not only methemoglobin does not bind oxygen, but it also prevents the oxygen that's already on the hemoglobin from being released to tissue. What are the causes of this stupid disease? Acquired or congenital? Acquired why? Chemicals and drugs, antibiotics such as sulfur drugs, TMP, SMX, and sulfonamide, which is the SMX part of the TMP, Depson, local anesthetic such as lidocaine, benzocaine, some non-steroidal such as acetaminophen, also known as Tylenol, aniline dyes, nitrates, nitrite, sodium nitroprosite, sepsis, and dehydration. All of these can lead to methemoglobinemia. Congenital, there is an autosomal recessive condition when you are deficient, the enzyme. What kind of enzyme is that? It's the NADPH-dependent cytochrome B5 methemoglobin reductase, remember? Infants less than six months already have a deficiency of this enzyme. That's why infants are more, more labile to methemoglobin. G6PD deficiency, of course, because the NADPH helps the reductase reduces the methemoglobin into regular hemoglobin. And a disease called hemoglobin M disease, or also known as Milwaukee disease. Love the people of Wisconsin. Now use your common sense with your clinical sense. You have skin discoloration. Yes. What kind of discoloration? Pale, gray, blue, dusky coloration of the skin. Cyanosis, central or peripheral, central, blue lips and blue tongue. Headache, lightheadedness, weakness, confusion, just pain, palpitation, ultra mental status, delirium, seizure, acidosis, arrhythmia, pale fatigue, cardiac ischemia, because we have functional anemia. So let's answer the vignette of the previous video. 31 year old male comes to your office in December complaining of sore throat, headache, aches and fever. He lives with his mother who has a cold. You diagnose him with viral pharyngitis. You sprayed some lidocaine for the throat pain. You gave him Tylenol and sent him home. Then three days later he came back with his lawyer because his skin is dusky, his tongue and lips are blue, and he threatens to sue. He has headache and he is so tired because of you. Blood you drew and its color was dark. His SO2 is low, his PaO2 is off the chart. What's the most likely diagnosis? The answer is methemoglobinemia. Pay attention here, because you're a stupid doctor, you used lidocaine for the throat pain, and you gave him acetaminophen, both of which can lead to methemoglobinemia. Then he came back because his skin is dusky, again, discoloration of the skin is common in methemoglobinemia. His tongues and lips are blue. This is central cyanosis, which is different from peripheral cyanosis. In peripheral cyanosis, your extremities are blue, but your tongue and lips are normal. Here, you have the tongue and lips are blue. Maybe the whole body is blue. It's also possible to be in central cyanosis. He has headache. Yes, methemoglobinemia can lead to headache. Tired, fatigue because of the functional anemia. Blood you drew and its color was dark. Why dark? Because it's methemoglobin. It's not oxyhemoglobin, remember? 
His SO2 is low. What is SO2? It's the oxygen that's on the hemoglobin. So here is the red blood cell and here is the hemoglobin. What happened to the oxygen on the hemoglobin? It's decreased. Why? Because this hemoglobin is not normal hemoglobin. It's met hemoglobin. It can't bind oxygen because only Fe2 binds O2. His PaO2 is off the chart. Normally in met hemoglobinemia, PaO2 is normal. Could it be high? Yes, it could. Why? Because oxygen cannot bind to the hemoglobin, it will float in the plasma peacefully. When no oxygen is binding to the hemoglobin, more oxygen is floating in the arterial blood, raising the PaO2. That's it. With medicosis perfectionalis, medicine makes perfect sense. It's a piece of cake. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. You can get all of my notes if you go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. And some cases are coming to Patreon very soon. So make sure to go there. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard.